Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the next method in spread spectrum. So the next method in spread spectrum is a direct sequence spread spectrum. That is nothing but DSS. So, sorry, the main goal of a spread spectrum is to reduce the interference and spying. So even though reducing to prevent guys. So basically we don't want any kind of interference or spying on our transferring data. So that is the main thing. So basically in our last lecture we discussed with respect to frequency by changing the frequency every some some time. So but that thing does not look so good right. Yes basically you need to change again and again your friend needs to change and all those signals should be in a proper attachable way so that the message will be sent in a proper way or the communication will be clear and there are various issues right. Yes. So to reduce all those things we can use the direct sequence spread spectrum. So if I ask you what is the best method to hide something, the first thing that you will be saying is encrypt the data, who can read it, who can understand it, right? Yes, that is true. The same concept we will be applying here guys. Okay, so first let us go through the theoretical approach or let us go through the example guys. Okay, so better let us go through the example so that you will be having a clear idea. Okay, yes. Okay, so Okay, so let us go through step by step, guys, because and it, that in that it will be easy for you, right? So here we start. We here we use a secret code which we use on both sides, sender side and the encoder side. So basically, in cryptography, we will be saying key key, right? Yes. So similarly, here we will be calling it as a secret code. So that secret code is near you as well as the receiver, but not near those near the. XYZ guy. So the XYZ guy does not have it. So only you and your friend have it. So that's a safe thing, right? Yes. So the first step you will be doing is take the user data, which the user want to send. So here I took the user wants to send a 01. That's it. Simple, right? 01. He wants to send. Okay. So I took the data. So create a chipping sequence slash secret code, which only known to you and sender. Simple. So create a code and send it to your friend somehow. So or inform him a prior that this will be our code. Okay. Yes. So I created a code and I informed my friend also. So this code is a bit lengthy also. So please don't worry about it guys. It will be really easy to understand also. Don't worry. Okay. So once I got the code, the chipping sequence or the code, I will be doing XOR operation with respect to the user data. Simple. Okay. So perform XOR operation between the user data and shipping code. Okay, guys, I'm saying you clearly first only. So in some books, it is a given directly perform XOR operation. Like here we are having two bits, right? Yes. So exactly take half of it and perform a zero with XOR with all them and one with XOR with all them. Okay. So you'll be getting a result like this. Okay. And that is the first way in some books. Okay. So in some books, it is given that multiply with, sorry, perform XOR with zero with all of them and draw the signal. Similarly, take this one and do XOR operation with all of them. So there are two different methods guys. So basically in your college, when your teachers taught you which method they followed, use that. That's it. Simple, right? So I, I thought this method is better like halving it and multiplying. So I, I solved it using that. Okay. Yes. So exactly half it guys. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So until here I multiplied with a 0. After that I multiplied with 1. Okay. So what I should multiply, what I should do. So the thing you will be doing is XOR guys. So XOR is a, a different operator when they are same like 0, 0 and 1, 1 you will be getting 0 as the result. When they are different you will be getting 1 as the result. Simple logic. Okay. Yes. So zero with zero will be getting zero as they are same. Okay. I think I cannot show it in a single frame. Okay. So for first six, first seven, let us solve it here. Guys, I'll be writing it here. So zero cross zero is a zero. Okay. So let me take another pen to be clear. Right. Okay. So zero cross zero is zero. Zero cross one is one. Zero cross one is one. Zero cross zero zero. Zero cross one one. Zero cross zero zero. Zero cross one. 1. So now we are done with half, right? So let us match. So first we wrote 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So till here we are done with the first one, right? Yes. So once we are done with the first one, so let us now take the second one. So 1 with a 0 
it is a 1 1 with 1 0 1 with 1 0 1 with 0 1 1 with 1 sorry 1 with 1 0 1 with 0 1 1 with 1 0 okay so now let us cross check so 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 yes we got the exact one right yes so here i followed the halving method okay so i don't know exactly are there any method names or not so i'm just i just wrote perform xor between user data and shipping data that's it so you will be asking me that okay so what should i write if i am using the other method so write it in this way guys so now take the first bit of the message and perform xor with each bit of the shipping code and get the result and repeat step 3 for all bits of the user data so if you write this you need to follow the previous method which i told you right yes so here we did the direct perform perform xor so we halved the data and for first half we took this for second half we took one that's it so we got some data right yes so once you got the data so now this can be transferred with no problem okay so assume that there is i am the hacker okay so let us take I am me only the hacker so i started checking i got this data i read it so I wasn't able to understand anything. So basically the original data is 0, 1. Assume the message is hi guys. Okay. Hi. Okay. So once I decoded it, I got the message uh, welcome. So is that same? No. Hence, I got into the wrong way, right? Yes. So in this way. Okay. Yes. So in that way, it will be helping. Even the hacker gets the data, it will be of no use because he, when he decodes it, he'll be getting some other message right yes so now the, this data can be transferred without any problem so once a receiver receives it he will just do xor with the data xor of received data with the chipping sequence okay so this sounds a bit funny right yes so the thing so this is the result right yes so he will be performing xor in between these two so 0 cross 0 is 0 0 x 1 xor 1 is 0 1 xor 1 is 0 0 xor 0 is 0 1 xor 0 is 0 1 xor 1 is a 0, 0 xor 0 is 0, 1 x cross 1 is a 0, 0 x cross 1 is a 1, 1 0 1, 1 0 1, 0 1 1, 1 0 1, 1 0 1, 1 0 1, yes. So exactly initially we got 0, after that we got 1. So if you observe here, so we indirectly decoded the same data, right? Yes. So this whole method is a nothing but our direct sequence spreading spectrum. So here the concept is we have the message. We used a code, we done XOR in between them and generated some result signal which we sent to the receiver. So once so, so to the receiver, yeah, once the receiver received it, he took it and he multiplied XOR with the chipping code to get the original data. Simple flow, right? If you want, you can draw the block diagram and you can show in your examination. Okay? So based on the marks, you need to elaborate your answer. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got a clear idea about this. Sir direct sequence is pet spectrum okay yes so in the next lecture we'll be going through the mac layer guys that is nothing but medium access control okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching